share. Okay, well, it is, it is a pleasure to introduce uh, Luisa Patton. Um, Luisa Patton uh, originally uh, studied uh, mathematics in uh, the Universidad Autónoma de Coahuila. Uh, and then he joined uh, IRIA, well, back then, I guess, the CRIA, the Center for Radio Astronomy and Astrophysics, uh, and did his master's and, and PhD here um, under the supervision of Luis Felipe Rodriguez, I think. Um, and then he, he spent a few years in, in, in Germany at the Max Planck uh, for radio astronomy in Bonn. Um, and, and then he was hired here, uh, right? That was your only post, right? Uh, okay, so yeah, and then, and then he was hired here at, 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 the, at the back then uh, Korea, now Iria. Um, so, uh, Luis Zapata works on uh, radio astronomy. He studies uh, uh, planet formation, star formation in uh, submillimeter uh, wavelengths, uh, well, radio to submillimeter. Uh, he has uh, won uh, various prizes, uh, like the, uh, the Universidad Nacional uh, for, for young, uh, young Academics, uh, the TUAS the uh, Young Scientist Prize, and uh, he has uh, over 100 uh, refereed publications, uh, over uh, over 2,000 citations, um, and well, and of course he's currently the director of IRIA since uh, since last year, about a year ago. Uh, and today he will tell us about uh, confirming the explosive outflow in G589 with Alma. So uh, yeah, so so please, uh, uh, please. Uh, well, thank you, Ms. Vicente, for the introduction. And let me start now. I'm going to start to share my screen. I hope I don't want to have any problem. And I think, let me see. Do you see everything fine? Yes, Vicente? Uh, yes, yes. yes. And you see the pointer and everything, I think so. But let me start with uh, this talk. I mean, I, this is actually a story that we did with Alma was really recently, the last year we started to, to do this study and I want to, to share with you all the results of this study. I, really I think it's really nice to see the results from Alma. I remember when I was a student, Alma was really far, far away from that I really Thought, but now I am actually working with Alma and the future is now on and I am happy to, to be part of this telescope. As you see, I mean, I'm going to talk about these explosive outflows that are really new kind of, of outflows. I'm going to, to talk about a little bit more in the introduction. Let me start with a really simple image showing the really typical outflow from the low master star. This, this image is a composition from the SMA. You see the, the red colors and the blue colors. And also you see the H2 emission from the, from the molecular gas. You see this kind of really nice bone shocks from the really outside of the protostar, you see the protostar in the middle, you see a really nice collimated bipolar outflow that is emanating from this protostar. This is a really classical view from, from the outflows, molecular outflows from the low mass stars, also from the high mass, so I'm going to show you later. But the nice thing is that this view is looks like it's a pretty, maybe associated with the formation of the low mass stars. When we go to the counterparts that are the high mass, look like there is another things that are really interesting that, I, that I'm going to show you. And if we go and see the kinematics of the outflow, this is a, again SMA observation. You can see here the emission from the H2, H2 that is also in the last image, you can see the bone shocks, but here I overlay the CO2 to 1 emission, that is the molecular emission from the SMA. And every position here and every cross that you see here are the position of the different condensations that I see 
in the CO emission. You say it's a really well co correlated with the H2 emission. You, you actually can see this kind of really nice point shocks. You see still some emission far away from the source. The source here is translated by the 1.3 centimeter emission that is the, <clears throat> the ionized gas associated with this protostar in the middle. These are low mass, as I already told you. But the nice thing is when I go and do a simple thing, I do the PV diagram that, I mean, in, in this one millimeter region, we really use these diagrams. You put in the two, in this kind of figure, the projected distance versus the radial velocity. And every cross that is hit correspond to every cross that is in this image. You, you see the really bulk or emission at different velocities and different positions. But you can see that the crosses really mark where the CO emission is located. No, I mean, you see really nicely the well cor correlation between the crosses that is from the channels velocity maps and the PV diagrams. And also you can see this kind of shocks that, that is a, some kind of internal rocket suffices that already Canton Raga did a really nice work and display this kind of, of structure. That means you have a, a protostar that is really with a wind for a long, long time. Is this wind is interacted with the cloud and with the cloud is forming these internal working surfaces. I mean, you can see this kind of bone shocks. But the bulk of emissions is really located in a different position and a different velocities. You don't see a really train here. I mean, you can see maybe some kind of hobo velocity law in this position, but it's not really, I mean, well defined. And you actually can see that the low mass or the, the low velocity. I mean, emission from the from the outflow is located really close to the source. Here in the red the square is located the source uh, that is in the position zero and the velocity of the cloud. And most of the, this emission that is really <clears throat> far away from the from the outflow because it is located with low low velocities. I mean, this is anti-correlated with the position and the velocity. But this is already many people has really studied this and they really started to understand this process and how the, the bipolar outflows, the HH objects that you also have are working. And in the other case that I wanted to show you here is a case of the high mass stars. Now in the high mass stars, you actually have also really collimated bipolar outflows. You hear the one of the nice was one of the nice examples that is the object 8081. <coughs> this object is uh, actually a high mass star that is something around the 10 solar masses. I mean the size of it is is around uh, 500 AU is really small comparable to the low mass. And from here you can see the emission the moment one emission, where you can see the red shifted emission, blue shifted emission that is the, the associated with a disc, a really a small disc, and it's also rotating. It's really similar the thing that we see in the in the low mass cases. You know, it's also here in the east image you can see the really nice collimated outflow from this object. You can see also see this kind of gradient. And this, this, I mean, many people also think that maybe the low mass and high mass stars are in some way forming a star and it's in the same paradigm that, that uh, But after some, I mean, nice observations, we started to have another kind of outflows that we call it explosive outflows. This is kind of different outflow that look like these are different phenomena here associated with this kind of outflows. And let me show you some really nice image also from ALMA. This is really recent image, I mean, in 2000, 
17, we obtain this image with ALMA. Here, I am presenting the ALMA CO2 to one moment, I mean, about one millimeter emission. You can see a really nice image. This is a region where massive stuff actually are forming. And in the middle of this region, the, the name is Orion KL from this to <clears throat> really low okay, infrared emission of observations. And from these observations, I mean, these people, Berkeley and Nawaber, Clayman and Lowe, discovered this region that is really active in, in Orion. And you can see if we go and try to start to study this region that is forming massive stars, we actually find this kind of explosive event that we are starting to, to distinct what really happened to produce this outflow. I mean, the outflow, the age of the outflow is around uh, 700 years. It's really, I mean, young. And something happened here that is really different thing the the bipolar outflow associated with low mass and also associated with the high mass stars, some high mass stars. This region is one of the closest massive star forming regions. The distance, I mean, Lorraine also with <clears throat> his team and working in the distance is around uh, 400 parsecs. This region is associated with a really strong maser and thermal emission from different species. You can see actually here from the CO that is really active. You can see that many filaments emanating from this region and we are really <clears throat> started to understand what really happened in this part. Here, I mean, you can see in the south part, the famous trapezium that you can see that there are like four stars and massive stars. Those stars are actually older than, than the stars that we have in Orion KL. And we are actually having also forming massive stars you know, in, in different periods that you can see in the image. If we only put the moment zero one map, you know, the, with the infrared emission, you can see the outflow really nice. It's really like isotropic outflow. You see emission and filaments from different positions. Here, the the arrows are tracing some actually runaway stars that we also are working with uh, Aridia, with Luis Rodriguez and another people that is also involved in these studies. But the nice thing here in the <coughs> gray scale is the see the explosion of the explosive outflow. You know, this is a really different thing from the typical low mass outflows. We go to the 3D image we can do because we have the velocity and we have the position. We can do the 3D maps. I am rotating actually this map and you can see really nicely the explosion. No, I mean, here as you can see in the middle of this movie, you see the velocity that are associated with the cloud and far away from the from this <clears throat> I mean, emission, you see emission that are really high velocity things. I mean, if you are far away from the center of this cloud, you can see really nicely how the, the filaments go away from the, from the center. No? And this is really spectacular because, I mean, look like when the, the stars that are associated with massive stars are forming, they also seem to explode as, <coughs> as they do when are really involved and in the final stages. And this explosion, we are starting to characterize and try to see what are the properties of the of the, this kind of events. And here, for example, is again this TV diagrams that we also use frequently. You have the radial velocity in this position, and you have the projected distance from the origin. I think many people do already see this image. You can see that every filament is pointing really clearly to a single position like explosion. 
Also in velocity, there is a single position, more or less is the cloud velocity that is around 10 kilometers. But all the filaments that we see in this explosion looks like a hobo low velocity. I mean, when you are far away from the center, you have a really high velocity. When you are close to the center, you have a low velocity. This is related with the, with the explosion. The explosion seems to occur that I already told you is around like 500 years ago or something like that. And in the center of the explosion, we actually find also some stars that are runaway stars. These stars, we are thinking that, that are, are related with the explosion, maybe associated with some merge, merger or some fusion of the stars because maybe formed a, bin a close binary study after this, maybe there's some kind of merge that's produced this kind of outflow. You can see here the radio emission of the three star that we started actually to work with Luis Rodriguez long, long time ago. And those star, I mean, the velocities is around 20 to 30 kilometers, the tangential velocities. The age is really similar, like the outflow is like a 500 years ago, of course, this also dynamic event and energy is also associated with the energy of the outflow that is around 10 to the four, 10 to the 47 to the 48, no more or less. New observation from Sergio that is also part of the group, uh, Adiria, also started to find another objects, I mean, radio, it starts here. You have the call that is N I B N, and they look like they're the other guys that are this this star infrared star and Zapata 11 that this is also associated with this kind of dynamical event. And now the people is really thinking that may, maybe more stars are involved in the explosion, are involved in the dynamics of this event in Orion. And we are starting to think what really happened here to produce the outflow and produce the, the runaway stars. No, it's not so easy the problem. I mean, some theoretical guys like Jorge Canto is trying to explain what really could it happen to produce this kind of explosion and this kind of movement of the stars. For, for the outflows, actually, we have now some characteristics and we have now associated with this explosive a few things that we think maybe are related with the nature. You can see here the four points. I mean, the explosive outflows consist of really narrow straight filaments like, like the ejections. The explosive outflow seems to, to be isotropic in the configuration. The almost every molecular filaments point back to approximately, approximately to the explosion site. This, the outflow also is well defined in the hobo low flow like, I mean, this kind of law of the velocity of the filaments. I mean, the filaments that already show you have some kind of structure in velocity. They present this kind of hobo flow like. And also, if you look in the in the interferometric and also single dish telescope observation, you see that in the explosive outflow, there are always some kind of overlapping between the red shifted and the blue shifted components. No, this is because you see something that is isotropic, and you find something that is blue shifted and red shifted in the really similar part of the sky, you no? Know? And this is really important because it looks like for you having a bipolar outflow, like with the two components really well aligned in the sky, look like it's really difficult, you no? Know, because I mean, you have a really large number, large number of, of position of the sky and it's really difficult to have this overlapping, you no? Know? For the explosive outflow, look like it's not the, the case. Look like you can have this kind of overlapping really frequently. And now the thing is that we were really interested in trying to 
find more cases like Orion and start to see if this is a really different thing and this is associated with uh, another high mass stars. And we started to look also in this kind of source that the name is G5.89. This is, a, I mean, you can see the, the coordinated, the galactic coordinates of this source. And here is the source, I mean, <coughs> presenting some image, really nice image, first from Spitzer, you, you can see the, <coughs> the, in the survey from Glimpse, the three bands, I mean, the 3.6, 4.5, a microns, and the composite from this region, I mean, you can see again the scale. If we do a zoom, we can see really nicely the region that is G5.89, and it's associated with the three colors. You now here is more or less like one of, you know, you know? and this is this region is also really bright. I mean, it's 10 to the five solar luminosities. It's far away. I mean, Orion, you can remember that this half of uh, 500 parsecs or 400 parsecs more, <clears throat> more precisely. And here is really far, I mean, it's like 2.9 kiloparsecs. And the nice thing is that you see really clear the, the region. If we go and, and study in a different wavelets, you can see the Billet observations look like some kind of shell that is some hypercompact to region associated with this star. From the SMA, there is also associated dust with this kind of ultra compact to region in, this, in the middle of this region. And you can see here also the scale. The scale are really different. This is like two art seconds, two art seconds for this. I mean, all the region is like one minute. It's, everything is located in the really inner part of this emission. And if we go and do the a zoom here, you can see also in the infrared wavelets, here is NAC observation from different bands. You have the key band, L band, H band. You see it's a really nice, some kind of shell that is associated with this, I mean, source and in, in this observation, actually, the people already find some kind of really, I mean, round source that is associated with a odd type source. But uh, this is located on the shell. I mean, you see here the shell, and in the middle of the shell is located this high mass star. And this high mass star is really young. I mean, it looks like it's forming. And many people really think about that maybe it's associated with the H2 region and is associated with the formation of the massive stars in this region. And this, actually this star, as already told you, is like a whole type a star is more or less all five spectral type of that is really bright and is really massive, but it's located not in the middle of the shell, it's located on the, on the more, I mean, more or less on the shell, no, no, in the center of the shell. If we continue, I mean, with more observation, more people was really interested to try to study the massive star formation in this region. Let me go. Here is another some SMA observation, you can see the, the, the shell that is associated with this region. It has many molecules, I mean, the mission of many molecules, you can see some associated with sulfur, some associated with carbon. But the nice thing, uh, most of the, of the molecular heat is located in the shell associated with the ultra compact H2 region, more or less, the field the star is located in this position and the emission is really, really rich in many, in many lines. 
There is some studies from Rogan and Hunter that you can go and see this kind of studies, molecular studies. Another nice thing is the shell, the age of the shell is around a, a 600 years, 700 years, more or less. And this is also the people that started to think what is really ex exciting all this, I mean, molecular emission, centimeter emission. You can see from here, again, I put a really nice spectra from the CO, from the SMA. And it's really broad, I mean, the SMA discovered a really broad emission, something like a 200 kilometers per second. I mean, it's really broad. But the, nice, the other thing that the people was always, I mean, asking, was what is the base of this power outflow? Because from these images, you can see that it's not really, I mean, associated outflow, or it's not really clear outflow associated with this region. And the people really was thinking about this observations. I mean, another nice thing is, I mean, there are more observations from the SMA. You can see from here, this observation is, I mean, made in something around uh, about 220,000, this more, more or less. You see the 12, around like 10 years. And you can see here, you see the emission in contours, the blue shifted emission, the red shifted emission. The people at, at that time thought that maybe you have like two outflows. Here is one outflow. Here is in the other outflow. You see the H2 region here associated with the field star. And the people also thought maybe it's associated with a bipolar outflow that is associated with this kind of, I mean, typical formation of the low mass star. Here in this diagram, I also show you the PV diagram. This is the position velocity. You have the velocity here is really broad. You can see like almost at 250 kilometers. But the nice thing here is that you see some kind of filaments like a cobalt low filaments. I mean, you can see heat really broad filaments and look like that associated maybe with the outflow that is located here. And this is what's really interesting because after this position velocity diagram, we started to think about this region and started to see more clearly and do some more observations and look also in the archive from the SMA and try to see if we have like multiple outflows associated with this region. Here is not really clear. I mean, you can see, you can see maybe if you have here the blue shifted, what is the red shifted is not really a counterpart or maybe in this part is more really like complicated thing. We did some, I mean, observation and we also started to, to work with this region here is the SMA observations that we actually obtained a long time ago, like 2018, 2017. And from here, we did actually some kind of similar work like, like Orion. We took these observations from the CO322 with angular resolution less than one hour second. You can start to resolve really well all the, the emission from the, from the CO. And you can see some filaments here. You, you actually can see like six filaments. This is two red shifted, three blue shifted. Here is a really small one, but it's not really clear. You here actually put the position of the field star. Here we see also the position of another star that is the Puga star that they actually discovered in the optical emission. And in the square here, I am tracing the millimeter compact sources that the SMA actually detected. But again, you say the filaments that are really high velocity filaments, some of them started to point to the, to the center of this kind of shell uh, that we were actually a bit confused because none of them started to point to these sources more or less they started to see in this position, to point to this position 
But what's really similar that we actually see in the in Orion KL associated with this explosive outflows. We did the same experiment. I mean, we put the PV diagrams. Here is the projected distance. Again, the radial velocity is really broad velocities. And you started to see that these filaments also started to point it to a single position, like an explosive outflow. But we have a really small number of the filaments that we were really skeptical. It is really clear explosive outflow associated with this region. And now we actually started to think about ALMA and see with, with ALMA, we started to see more filaments. And the nice thing is that we have actually more filaments associated with this outflow. Here, we did some observation with ALMA. You can see in the band six is around um, uh, 200, 30 gigahertz associated with the CO221. The spectral resolution was really nice, like one kilometer per second. We can resolve many of the filaments and many of the molecular emission associated with this plosive outflows. The angular resolution was also really good. I mean, like 0.1 is more or less like 10 times more angular resolution compared with the, with the SMA. And something that was really spectacular was the sensitivity. I mean, the sensitivity here, you can see, this is around a 40 times better sensitivity than the SMA observation. And this is really like probably the key point of the, of the observation because with the sensitivity of ALMA, we can go deeper and see if we find more filaments. I remember the case on Orion KL when I was working with Orion KL with the SMA, we have only like 30 filaments associated with explosive outflow with SMA. When, when we go with ALMA observe this explosive outflow in, in Orion KL was totally nice because we find actually like 200 filaments. I mean, the number of the filaments was totally different and we can really say this is explosive outflow and was really clear the nature of the of the outflow and now we we wanted to do the same thing with with this object and here let me show you the results was really nice i mean really you can see from this image is really nice to see that we find many filaments here this image i am showing you the moment zero one that you can see the velocity field of the CO221 emission. In this image, you can see different velocities going from the blue shifted to the red shifted emission. And you can see that there's many filaments going away from this kind of center of the G589. I also plotted the position of the pale star, the infrared star associated with the O type star, the Puga star, the SMA, I mean, compact sources observed in the millimeter region. And also, I am putting here the center of the, all the filaments that I show you in this image. Also, in the moment zero one, you see the, the really clear sum of the filaments that are associated with the, this kind of region. But this is really nice because it's really similar to Orion KL. I mean, there is something associated with a massive star when they are forming that at some point look like they explode. They put all this energy in the, in the molecular cloud. They form this kind of filaments. You can see it really nice. Here also, I put the, the filaments that I found in the channel velocity maps. You can see the blue and the red filaments. You see also the emission from the H2 region, you know, the ultra compact H2 region here in black colors. But from this image, it was really clear that we have the same case as Orion KL. And these kind of things are started to be really interesting because maybe we have a different thing happening 
is during the formation of the massive stars. We find actually something like a 30 molecular filaments associated with this region. You can see again that I already made in different observations the, the PV diagram. In the PV diagram, all the filaments seems to point again to one center here that is really like associated with the with a single explosion. The age of this explosion is around a, around a thousand years. It's really similar also like the Orion Kyle. And here we really confirm that we have some kind of explosive outflow associated with this region like in Orion. And this is this kind of explosive outflow as associated with high mass stars, so with the formation of the high mass star, maybe because the high mass stars are forming in clusters, are forming in a different way than the low mass stars. These kind of events are probably during the formation of the, of the massive stars. But again, you can see, I mean, the, the, all the, the compact sources are not in the center of the explosion, as more in the edges of the explosion. I mean, it looks like everything moved move the, the gas and move the, all the free planets. The star also seems to move from this center. And if you estimate more or less <coughs> the time that you have this star to move to the edge of the H2 region, the more or less the edge is really similar also to the explosion like the Orion Kyle is around a, a thousand years, I mean, Look like also the movement of the stars are probably with low velocity, like 20, 30 kilometers per second, like Orion Kyle. And this motion, I mean, maybe is associated also with explosion. Here is more or less the, the estimation of the center of the, of the explosion. You can see here first in the radial velocity and in in this second panel and the third panel, you have the project distance. And here are more or less all the position of the, the filaments. And you can see that we can actually do some statistic and find some, some confidence intervals for, for the position. And here is really clear that in the center of the, <coughs> of the H2 region, all the filaments are pointing to this position. Also in the velocity are really as is more or less in the cloud velocity that we have associated with the center of the explosion. We actually did some 3D image. You can see from this, from this cube. Here the thing is I plotted, I mean the position, you can see the position in dry ascension and declination. And also I plotted in the 3D, the velocities. Every color that you see here is a different velocity. I mean, the, you, you have the red shifted velocity here, you have the blue shifted velocity <coughs> over here, and you see more or less all the filaments that we detected with the ALMA observation. There are really, I mean, filaments that are located really far away and those filaments are associated with really high velocity. I mean, you can see the colors. Another nice thing from this 3D image that you can see the really clear Hobo velocity load. I mean, see, for example, here the filaments that are close to the center are more like orange. And if you go far away from the center, you started to see really more red colors. That means the velocity that really changed it's following a whole velocity law. No? But this is really nice because it's really, really like, like Orion Kyle. And we have another example that this kind of explosion are really occurring during the formation of the massive stars. It is again, there are also many filaments that are associated. Here, another thing is you can see that in the middle velocities, it's really difficult to try to find, I mean, the filaments, because you started to see some kind 
of the cloud emission and it's complicated to separate the cloud emission from the filament emission. And but you see clearly after this part of the of the data that you have the filaments pointing to a, a position like explosion. Another nice thing is that we also have more molecules like SIO. The SIO is associated also with shocks. And the SIO, I mean, you can see this, there are already some observations with Peter Solin, that was a student from Paul Ho, and was working at that time when I was there with the SMA. And you can see the emission, the continuum emission in contours here. You can see the field star that already was, I mean, clear that that the star was associated with this region. And this, is, this emission is associated with the ultra compact S2 region that I, I already showed you. But if you go to the SIO, look like there is some kind of uh, bipolar outflow that many people was always thinking that this region was associated with a polar outflow, associated maybe with this kind of odd type of star, that is the field star. But when you go to the SMA, the things really change a lot. You know? I mean, you can see from this image, the SIO emission, this is the moment zero emission from the SIO. And here is the moment one emission. You can see the velocity fields. I mean, the velocity is really different compared with the CO. But you started to see some filaments and really nicely the explosion. And this is more close to the, I mean, to the explosion, to the side of the explosion. He also have the two stars that is associated with the high mass stars, the ultra compact H2 region. And here in the middle, there is nothing. You know, there is no gas. There is no, no also molecular gas, no also ionizated gas. Look like everything is expanding and is really going far away, you know, like uh, explosion. But look like it's not a bipolar outflow associated with this region. It's more like explosion associated with this kind of region. We started actually to continue study this region. We have a new observation now with Alma. And from, from this observation, actually, Manuel. Lopez Fernandez is working there in Argentina. And you can see here the, the dust emission also with ALMA observations. You can see some kind of filament crossing more or less the ultra compact H2 region, more or less here is ultra compact H2 region. And here we have actually overlaid the magnetic field that was inferred with the observation you can see really nicely that it, the, the magnetic field is really nice alienated with the, with the filaments that is in the north part of the H2 region. When, when you go to the H2 region and the explosion, the filament seems to point at weight like a radial orientation that may be associated with the explosion that also alienate the, the filaments in a different direction. See also these parts. I mean, these parts are really well alienated with the filaments. Also look, this part is really nicely alienated. But when you see the region in the explosion, look like the explosion also have to do with the magnetic fields and they are starting to be alienated in different orientation. Now also have some observation with the SMA and also with ALMA. And the observation with ALMA, here you can have uh, different things. Here, the red is the CO emission. You see the CO emission here. Blue is the CO emission. And the green, I put the 1.3 millimeter emission from, the, from ALMA. You actually can see part of the H2 region here. You see emission from the filaments, from the CO and SIO. But something that we really find is this kind of Thing you actually have some continuum source here that is a millimeter source that is kind of elongated in this direction, but look like there is some kind of shaded area. I mean, you can see something that is empty here, 
and look like the explosion go and do some kind of shocks for made here and there is nothing in the some kind of area in this part no and look like maybe the explosion is really impacting this source and is maybe creating some molecules associated with this compact source but this is really similar like in Orion Kyle in Orion Kyle we also find some part of the explosion where interact to the this really compact emission dust emission and they just stop it and started to form it some molecular emission like the hot core emission that is associated with the Orion Kyle this is the probably the the nightly thing, I mean, the magnetic field seems to be also affected by the explosion and also some sources around the explosion that started to, to be affected by this kind of event. And let me see the time. I am almost done. The other thing that we actually started to think is we have more questions actually from this observation. The fifth question that we have is how common is this process in the form, in the formation of the massive star? This is something that really started to think about a little bit. I mean, if we put the three cases, we have Orion KL, we have DR21, and now we have G5.89. Is we see the times, I mean, Orion is like a 500 years ago happened this event. And then G5.89 is around a thousand years ago occurred. And the oldest one is actually the case of year 21, that is around a, a thousand, 10,000 years ago occurred this, this explosion. And if you put the distances, and also you put the ages, you started to have some kind of, of event rate from this. And we actually started to see that it's almost every 100 years started to have this kind of explosion. Now this is really similar to the supernova rate. And this is also nice because I mean, if you have a, the, and you see the massive stars that are more involved, most of the massive stars are also run away and maybe are associated with this kind of events like the explosion, the run away the stars, maybe are associated with mergers or associated with close binary formations. But this number is now nice to really start to find that it's close to the supernova rate. The other question that we started to see is what really happened in Orion KL, DR21, and this now G5.89. This is something that we really do not understand the physics behind of this kind of explosion. No, but what really produced the explosion, we really don't have idea. There are some ideas that already Adi Rodriguez and also Jorge Cantor started to think that maybe are associated with some kind of or stars crossing really with a really high velocity, some kind of clusters. We really don't be sure what really is happening that maybe are associated also with this formation or merger. We are also thinking you know, that maybe it's associated, but now we have more questions that answer that that we have and finally something that i wanted to show you and now the memes are really i mean <coughs> really nice and this is really something that i wanted to show you that maybe it's nice no we really are thinking now that the, the formation of the massive stars are not similar to the low mass stars. It looks like they are, they have a different, really nice things like this kind of explosions. Also they have this kind of nice region and the formation 
maybe some people really think they are similar. Now I am more thinking that is not similar and they are more maybe associated with mergers and associated with this kind of outflows. No? I am done here. If you have questions, I can answer every question that you have. Thank you for the attention. Thanks, thanks, Luis. Very, very nice talk. Um, so yes, we have time for questions. Uh, you can you can raise your hand or 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 if you put it in the chat, I can. Um, oh, Rosa. Yes, I, thank you, Luis. Very nice. Congratulations on finding another explosion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a question. In your in your um, you show this three D model uh -huh. in green. Okay. of the first star yes. and, and uh, of I think KL or ion and there's something there that looks like a plane like it, it looks very very isotropic at short distances and then you have this thing that's like a plane at long distances is that real Luis or, or what, what yes that? this is actually real you are in this kind of I mean part of the image you are seeing the cloud velocities and you are seeing the cloud but I mean, the really low velocity things that are associated with the cloud. And if you go far away, you started to increase the velocity and you see the filaments going away from the cloud. No? But in the other, I mean, image that I already show you from the filaments, you only see the filaments, you don't see the cloud. This is a, the difference. I can probably put it here in my top, let me show you again. You see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, look, this is a cloud. I mean, this is more or less when you see the all the, the map. This is a mosaic. That is the reason that you see some kind of square. But in the middle is the cloud velocity. And you see some filaments associated with the cloud velocity. Here, look here, here, those are associated with the cloud velocity that is low velocity. And also you see some outflows that are low velocity outflows here, but are not really high. When you see the high velocities going away from the cloud, you started to see the explosions that the filaments are really high velocity things. This is the 3D image that give you a really nice impression of the explosion. Okay. Thank you, Luis. Okay. Um, actually, Luis, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about this uh, uh, 3D visualization. Uh, um, I was wondering if, like, could you give a bit more details, a few more details about how, how you- This is actually from one, I mean, in the internet, you can find now maybe, software from making this kind of maps, 3D maps. And the idea is that you have the position that is on the plane of the sky and also have the velocity. You have the 3D emission, I mean, motion, no, the 3D map. And the idea is you suppose also that the velocity is proportional to the distance you can follow and form all these things. But this is, those maps are always with this trick. I mean, the velocity are proportional to distance, like a Hubble law. And you can recreate everything because if you suppose a different law, then you have a different thing. I mean, maybe more located or more like this, different thing. But you can find it, this is, I think, I find it in, in the internet from the, the when you put the data and they can create the 3D really easily. Okay, interesting. Yeah. But here it looks really nice, I mean, because I mean, for Ryan Kyle, you have really high velocities and many filaments, you can recreate really nicely the explosion. But when you go to the other regions, when you have less, filaments and more associated maybe with the cloud is a mess. 
No, it's not really as beautiful as this. Yeah, yeah it, it is nice. It is nice. Um, so there's maybe time for one more one more question. Um, maybe oh, uh, Ma Mauricio. Yes, uh, hi Luis. Uh, really nice work. Uh, one question about your meme. <laughs> I didn't quite follow in what in what sense the massive stars form like the Lauma stars. I mean, many people started at some point to think that you can probably stain the all the the futures that we see in the low mass stars. I mean, the low mass stars you have a really clear like a disk, a creating disk. You have a really collimated outflow, you know, in that is a bipolar. And the people really think maybe this paradigm is really can be associated with a high mass. I mean, if you translate this paradigm to, to the high mass, you are going to find also like this, and maybe really massive this, also really collimated outflow associated with a high mass star. I mean, the star in the middle is not a low mass star. It's probably 10, 20, 30 masses, no? a really big star in the middle. But look like at some point, many people actually are also worrying this. We have started to find that maybe there are some cases when you find this kind of things. If we go to the case, to this case, I mean, the HH, 80, 81, you can see really clear like long mass start forming here. It's really, I mean, similar in the way that they are forming. But look like when you go and study another regions like Orion KL or G589 or DR21, there is some kind of other things different from this paradigm. I mean, you started to find some kind of explosions, like explosive outflows. You started to see emission from the molecule, from many molecules that are associated with hot cores that are also associated maybe with explosion. And look like also the difference is that you started to find a clusters of stars that are just forming. And maybe the reason that you are forming in the cluster the stars start to interact and at some point maybe start to have some really close approaching or maybe they are merging and they produce this kind of explosions and look like also you have this kind of thing i mean the explosions the outflows and there are some kind of maybe of two ways of forming the star no you can think also a little bit more about this rate. I mean, if you think about the rate, look, for example, the supernova rate is one star form or one star, I mean, have a supernova more or less every 100 years, no, more or less. And when you go back, you also maybe think maybe one star is forming every one, 100 years. I mean, one star is supposed to be also maybe forming something with the same rate, you know? And if we go to the sea, the explosion, the rate seems to be really similar to this rate, the supernova rate. And maybe the thing is maybe the really massive stars only form with this kind of events, I mean, the explosions and these kind of things. Maybe with masses, maybe a little bit less, you have this kind of a star that is forming with a disk and jets, no? But maybe we go to the higher masses, it's a different thing, no? And this is the idea of this meme, no? That now you cannot really say that you have the same paradigm for the low mass stars, and high mass stars, there are more things happening, you know, in the case of the high, high mass stars. Thank you, Liz. <clears throat> okay, uh, Rosa, do you have another question or just? No, sorry, I forgot oh, to okay. take down my hand, sorry. Okay, um, well, in that case, um, if there are uh, no more questions, let's uh, let's thank uh, Luisa Pata again. Um, okay. 
Thank you. Nice talk and uh, see you next week. Uh, actually, I think next week is the uh, seminar of the uh, PhD students. Um, so uh, see, see you next time. Okay. okay. Bye. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.